G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to have a look at a plane that has sort of been lost to the matchmaker, and that is the F4C. This plane was entered into the game with a lot of hype and was really, really one of the meta planes for the longest time. And over time, slowly but surely, this plane has been power crept into oblivion, with the F4 facing tougher and tougher opponents and just not having the equipment at hand to deal with such opponents. And most of the time I'm referring to flares. This plane lacks any form of countermeasure and of course is stuck with missiles that hardly pull 20 Gs. In fact, I'm pretty sure the AIM-7D that it is equipped with uh, only pulls about 18 or 15. So you are going to really struggle to get targets to sort of fall into your missiles. And so we have to sort of try a different strategy here. We can't just play the same way that you would play the F4E or the F4J or hell, even having the luxury of the F14. You have to really try and not to be seen for the first about three minutes of the match and that's why we're skipping forward a little bit. We are going to play really conservatively. I have sort of played around with the radar here in order to get the best lock and at a 13 kilometer range we're going to engage in whatever hell the hell this is. And it doesn't really matter what it is, because as long as it is as far away as that, you are pretty much safe. Provided that they die to it, and they're not s several kilometers overhead, uh, you, you should be fine. But unfortunately for this A5, the flares that he's put out, or the, or the chaff that he's putting out, is not going to do anything for him, because radar works perfectly in War Thunder. Now, moving along, we have an F4F, and the F4F has fired a missile... German style with uh, or, or rather Germany main style uh, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna continue in a straight line I'm not gonna bother chasing it I'm pretty confident that there are bigger fish to fry here so we're just gonna go on ahead widen out that radar and have a look at what is there but there is an A5 behind us at about six kilometers and six kilometers is like the limit that you want your opponents to be behind you because otherwise they're going to start to get into areas where you can't turn around and re-engage them like I can here. I'm going to try for the aim 7. It's just not going to work really great. Go for a shady head on. And despite none of them hitting, it looks like my plane has uh, burst into a million pieces. So we're going to just continue on with a couple of uh, holes in our wing, but just, just know that it, there's no damage for some reason. So I've locked a target and I'm going to release an aim 7 d the F4F is pretty slow, so I'm fairly confident that I can hit him with that missile, and it is going to come true. The A5 here is coming, not coming back, but sort of loitering around, and I've got to make sure that he is not going to engage me. And if he is, well, I'm going to sort of crap my pants for a little bit. But you can actually deal with the A5. You've just got to be wary that in an energy dogfighting situation, you are probably not going to come off as the top dog. The A5 is based off the MiG-19, and the MiG-19 is a very, very good plane, but it's okay because we have a 20mm, and we managed to, to sort of rake across that 20mm along the A5's fuselage. Uh, this gun, I found, has just become anemic in the last couple patches. The Vulcan 20mm just does not hit nearly as well as it did before, and I just don't know why. It used to be really, really strong, like any hit like that would have taken it out. Uh, and I found, found this also with the F-104S, and, and depending on what happens in the next, cu next couple days, you might see this video first, and then you might see the F-104S next, but I've got them both ready to go anyway. A5 is going to look down the barrel of the AIM-7D, and he is going down to low altitude to get away from the missile, and it does work. And this is because the F-4C's uh, radar is pretty garbage. It doesn't have any look-down modes, so no pulse Doppler, no MTI. And of course, the moment that you do look at a target, uh, they will know because most of them have RWR. So you're going to have to be pretty sneaky. You're going to have to be sort of getting targets that are not nearly as uh, aware. And things like this Milan, uh, look, I, I don't really see the Milan as a threat at all, but he gets a face full of 20 mil and uh, he's so paper that he just dies. Just, just dies like that. And it's a beautiful thing because the Milan... Um, could have been a really, really good thing. Could have been really, really powerful, but it, but but it's not. So, yeah, very strange plane. Uh, I hope never to touch it and never to review it. Uh, but if you insist, maybe maybe I'll give the pain a go. But uh, we're going to sort of knock off our last little kill here with the A5, and that's the last enemy plane on the team, giving us a nice little 4K. We are basically looking at going after the planes that are distracted, kind of like you do in the F4J. You just have to be a little bit more careful with the targets that you engage. 
So we're going to move on to the next match here, and I am at altitude again. I do recommend climbing in the F4C because otherwise you will have no way of getting these missiles to work. Your engine power is not going to pull you through at sea level. In fact, uh, you are probably going to end up more as a victim at sea level than you are at altitude. And of course, the radar, most importantly, because this plane is a missile bus type of, uh, of, of plane. The way you play it, as, as I might describe a missile bus, uh, is a plane that is really hard to control in terms of its dogfighting capabilities. It might not have the best dogfighting uh, abilities, but it's got a lot of missiles, and that's kind of what makes up for it, or rather its avionics do make up for it. So uh, I would say the MiG-23M is a, a bit of a missile bus. I would also say the F-4J and maybe the F-4E is also a missile bus, um, although the F-4E less so because it's, you know, it's pretty lightweight, pretty maneuverable, and it's got the internal Vulcan. But the, my point is that these planes go around, fire their missiles, and then at the last second do boom and zoom type dogfighting. You don't do any sort of uh, low altitude, low speed turning because you're just not going to make it at all. In fact, I would be very surprised if you came out alive from uh, most low altitude turning dogfights because this plane is just so bad at them. Now we're gonna we're gonna do some boom and zoom here, but I've used the missile in the uh, in the boom, and I'm gonna use a gun instead. And again, I managed to not really get anything significant. I have to pull away and out so that I don't end up sort of in the clusterfuck. You can see all these planes converging. And I've noticed that the SU-25 is not paying attention to me, so that means I can roll around. And I've spotted the F-100. I'm going to go for a quick boot, quick head-on. Uh, and I managed to trade absolutely nothing, which is good. It could have been a very hairy situation. Uh, and I'm deciding to do a turning dogfight because the F-100 is going to run out of energy pretty quick. And I am barely confident that as long as I don't expire all of my energy and speed, I can keep up with the F-100D, but unfortunately, he meets a 9L to the face, because, you know, putting that thing down at 9.3 was, it made so much difference, you know, it took it away from the, from the 10.3 A10 Warthog, uh, and the 10.3 F5C, uh, and the, the, the 10.3 MiG-21 S&T, and MF, uh, and the SPSK at 10.0, and, oh wait, it didn't do anything, because, uh, look, the battle rating changes, I, I hate them, and I just think they're so stupid, and I've made several videos on them, and I I just have to bring it up one more time, just to sort of round out how stupid this change is. But regardless, we're in the F4C, we're going to do some good work here. Hopefully get this MiG-21. It looks like the altitude is just too low, there's just too much ground clutter here for the uh, radar to work. And so I'm going to put it up into a vertical. I know this MiG-21S is not going to be able to follow up because of the A-10, uh, and is just going to sort of struggle around here, flounder around, and I'm going to uh, release a, an AIM-9E. AIM-9Es are really, really brutal to enemies that are practically below 500 kilometers per hour. If you are sitting at that low speed, you're pretty much going to die, because you just don't have the speed to get away. Uh, maybe if you've got some sort of chaff or flares or whatever, you could, you could probably do that. Um, but the other option here is to be an A-10 Warthog and have lots of turning. So we are not only not going to be able to use any AIM-9Es on him, but we don't have any more. So we have to go guns, 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 uh, or hope that he climbs up enough for me to get a good lock with the AIM-9Ds or the AIM-7Ds, and is traveling slow enough for the AIM-7D to intercept him, which is exactly what's happening here. We have an oblivious A-10, and of course the A-10 being oblivious pays a repair cost with that lovely AIM-7D. I'm going to try and replicate it here with the MiG-21, uh, but the MiG-21 is traveling just way too fast because it's, you know, it's a, it's a speedy boy, it's very quick. It's probably about as quick as the F-4, uh, but of course, uh, I think there's a little bit of leeway there with the uh, MiG-21. Now, this particular MiG-21 decides to go off to the edge of the map and then go back to the airfield, uh, and that is pretty much all there is to this match. But you can sort of see the way that I'm playing this plane is not as a frontline fighter, but as a, as a support fighter, and that is the sort of meta that a missile bus needs to follow. You can't just go around dogfighting everything and expecting to win because you're not going to. In fact, what you need to do is sit on the periphery, look for the enemies at, of course, starting with the highest altitude, working your way down, and doing that similar tactic to boom and zoom because boom and zoom uh, never dies. Never dies. It doesn't matter where you are. Uh, you are always, always going to use boom and zoom in some form of the word. It is the most simple form of dogfighting. It is 
probably the most effective, uh, certainly the most conservative, and it is going to be the best way for you to get kills in the F4C. Of course, one of the first things about General Boom and Zoom is you have to eliminate the enemies at altitude, and this Harrier here is going to meet his match pretty damn quickly at the hand of an AIM-7D. The AIM-7D is a very finicky missile. It is not something that you can just send off and it'll just turn 90 degrees and go off on its merry way. You have to really, really prepare, prepare your opponents, or you have to really prepare your approach to your opponents in order to get the most effective uh, kills out of these missiles. You just have to basically go for head-ons, and that is more or less the only thing you can do at about 13 kilometers. Otherwise, it doesn't have the range anywhere beyond that. And of course, if your enemy is traveling behind or, or, or away from you, rather, you are certainly not going to be able to catch it with that missile because you only have a fairly limited burn time, especially compared to things like the AIM-7F. Um, you really need to make the most out of your missiles, and I think the best way to do that is in a high altitude head-on at about 13 kilometers range. You fire it, you wait, and at about seven or four kilometers, uh, you'll you'll get there. You'll you'll manage to to land it. And if you haven't done it by about seven or six, uh, start to consider using another missile. And that that's pretty much it to this plane. It, it's it's very very straightforward. But the problem is you have all of these premiums around you, uh, and what do you do? And the simple answer is you just don't engage them where they have an advantage. So don't engage them in a head-on. Don't engage them at close range. Don't engage them in a dogfight. And you know what? You, most of the time, you will be okay. Uh, it's hard to do, though. Very, very hard to do. Your biggest threat will be the A5. Your second biggest threat will be the MiG-21 SPSK. And your third biggest threat will be the A10 and the uh, SU-25. Everything else, you can pretty much deal with without too much of a problem. The MiG-21S sucks to deal with, but again, the missiles aren't particularly potent. And you can always do things like that. Kill them when they're unsuspecting. And this A5, you can always dogfight them. Believe it or not, you can actually dogfight the, uh, the the A5. You've just got to dump a little bit of fuel first. So you know, don't expect to do it super early game, but late game, absolutely, you can you can dogfight A5s. They are a bit fat, of course. Make sure that they are not traveling at below 500 kilometers per hour, because that's when you suck, and that's when they are really really good at dogfighting. MiG 21s don't even bother engaging if you have a disadvantage. I would just go home, to be honest. And uh, the A10. You really have to get behind, and you really have to come out from above and and uh, behind. Otherwise, you're just not going to make any targets. You, you're just simply going to die, and that is the only way that you can engage these things. And it's a shame that you have to be so damn conservative in order to beat such a such a simple plane, because it's not that good at dogfighting. They're not that great at uh, at energy engagements, but for some reason, they have really really powerful missiles at such a low battle rating. And of course. You know you can deal with them and i feel like in an up tier it should be fine like you, you should you should be able to see them without uh sort of kicking up too much of a fuss but at this particular battle rating you are often lower or at the same battle rating as an a5 and i i don't know i can kind of see that with the a5 i certainly can't see that with the su-25 and i certainly can't see that with the uh with the a10a they're just not comparable the F F4C is just worse at most engagements simply because you don't really have the uh, the ability to dodge those missiles. You don't have that uh, that those countermeasures, and that's the problem with the F4C. You have to play it like you're on attack mode all the time. The moment you go onto defense mode, you're gone. You're pretty much just not going to make it. And now where we can see here that the SU-25K in front of us, I was going to have to engage and kill very very soon or run away and just not get within the range of the R60Ms because three, three and a half kilometers is probably where I would sort of limit myself there uh, and I would not even touch it because that once once they lock onto you, it is very hard to shake the lock of an R60 and it is even harder to shake the lock of an AIM-9L and it is even harder still, well, maybe it's about as, as hard to shake the lock of a Matra Magic. But of course, if your opponents are distracted with uh, a friendly A10, for example, uh, this this is a great time to come in and engage. And of course, the first targets that you want to pick are the ones that are going to do the most damage to you, and that is the SU-25. But the MiG-21S is also looking juicy here, so I'm going to set him on fire, and we get a nice sort of toasted toasted stick over here in the form of the MiG-21S. And then we're looking for our next target of value, and that looks like the A5. Now, why have I gone for the A5 when there are targets there off to the right? Because one, he's closest, two, he's approaching, and three, he is at altitude. 
And the altitude is the most important bit here because if he is sitting at altitude, this is a chance for me to use an aim 7D and try and get myself a very easy kill because the 7Ds are only really good at that higher altitude. And when you are at that higher altitude, it is much easier to get kills with the radar that you, you've been given. But unfortunately for me, the, uh, the, the radar locks the uh, F3H and it leaves me in a shit situation. Now, I've overblown my approach here on the A5 and have a look at the this dogfight that ensues. I, I think that this is really important because the A5 is good at dogfighting if you are at lower speeds. Not as good as the F3H, but it certainly has more energy than the F3H. And the F4C over here that I'm flying uh, is also very, very capable. But because we've turned this into a 2v1, we can sort of meld our weaknesses away or, or um, remove our weaknesses and combine our strengths so that the A5C only has the option to sort of leave or try and pursue an energy fight. And it looks like he's, he's just run out of talent here. He's run out of skill. He's run out of talent. And unfortunately, he meets the end of the 20mm Vulcan Cannon. We're going to go for the Shen Yang. I've only just spotted this A5 who is heading back to base. But we have plenty of other fish to fry here. The Shen Yang is looking super juicy. And I, I kind of want to beat the, the Shen Yang up. But it looks like he might be meeting his match very, very soon. There's an A10 coming along. And there is an F104 that he is desperately trying to get away from. This is very, very unfair for the Shen Yang. I seriously don't think that he should be fighting A10s. And you know what? By putting the A10As up to 10.7, you would actually alleviate this issue. But then you would also throw the uh, A10s up into those top tier echelons. So it's not going to be good for the uh, A10 because you're just going to pollute top tier with them. And that's pretty rubbish, let's be honest. We, at the end of the day, need some battle rating decompression. And that's the only real thing that is going to affect the well-being of planes like this and the Shenyang F5. These are planes that used to be really, really strong and now no one really cares about them because they have bigger and shinier toys to play with and that's one of the saddest things about War Thunder. Some of these planes that devs put real work into and put real time and effort to perfect or at least to make them work, uh, they're just not being used because the game balance is just so poor. I don't really know how to say this, but this is really, really sad. You think about all the effort that these people put in, all the people that previously enjoyed playing these planes, some people that, you know, maybe served in, in planes like these. I, I heard an interview of one of the people that served in an F-4 Phantom in the Vietnam War, and he said, yeah, this, this kind of feels like a, a sort of dumbed-down version of flying the F-4 in real life. It's it's good. It, it feels authentic. Um, and it's really sad to, to sort of throw that experience or or the potential to enjoy that experience down the drain because this plane is, is really cool. It has plenty of options. And in fact, if you gave it flares and gave it chaff, most of the problems would be fixed. The only the only other thing I'd, I'd possibly suggest is maybe, maybe 9Gs. Uh, would giving it aim 9Gs be be uh, too much, perhaps? Maybe if you put it at 10.3, gave it 9G, 9Gs, maybe that would be uh, something acceptable, something that we could, we could potentially look into. Um, but I think this plane is pretty okay. You just have to play it extremely conservatively. You can't expect great things from it. And unfortunately for this plane, you just you, you just have to lower your expectations. And, and I hate to say that because this plane should be well balanced. And if you guys have a look at the video where I uploaded a, a spreadsheet and had a discussion about this battle rating uh, expansion to 12.0 and... You know, I, I thought I had something pretty good there, and I would like you guys to have a look at it. Of course, I'll leave that as a link in the description below, uh, or at the end of the video on one of the cards, so you guys can take a look at it and, you know, give me some criticism. I'm yet to update it after looking at my, my first round of criticism from it. Um, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what we can make, and, and we'll see if we can perhaps forward a solution to the developers and, and, and make a change, because planes like these really need to see the light of day again. And it's really sad that they don't because I just, I've had fun. I struggled a bit, but I also had a lot of fun, much like I will, as you'll probably be able to tell in the F-104 video uh, that is coming out very, very soon or has breached before this one. I'm not really sure. It's all, I'm waiting on an email. So if you guys, uh, you know, think about this plane. Think about the other planes that are left behind because of these new premiums, these shiny new planes. Think about them and maybe dust them off the shelf. Give them another go. Enjoy this long lost plane that once dominated the skies and now sits on a shelf gathering dust. 
Anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do it for, that'll do it for today. I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.